We're kidding, of course. Oh, nice. I was able to death this thing. Come here. Don't run away like an asshole. But then that would defeat the purpose of being naked. Plus, I blame you for letting me forget about this. No, I'm sorry. You can't blame me for that because you kept hinting at this and I kept bringing it up to you. I actually thought the church thing was what you were talking about. And then all of a sudden we find out, oh no, we forgot to do this. No, I'm sorry, Alex. I will not take the blame for that. But I always meant to do it within the next recording session, but you just never reminded me. Oh, okay. I still don't take the blame. You, It's still your fault. Face it, Adam. It's your fault. Deal, deal with it. It's, uh... This, this is going to be the episode where Drac and Shadow don't like each other. <laughs> and I'm just going to say, this is Sanjuro all over again. We forgot about poor Sanjuro. Alright, so this is level two. That was easy. Yeah! Remarkably easy encounter. Almost like the Grim Reaper in Castlevania 2. No, wait, that, I'm sorry, that was a horribly hard encounter. There were scythes everywhere, right, Alex? <laughs> yes. There were scythes everywhere. Okay, I'm not seeing portals in the meantime. Is this the right way to go? I don't know. Well, I guess we'll find out. Unfortunately, the map Oh, uh, there's a portal in the way, so there you go. That's a long corridor right there. Yay! Elemental hit! Okay. I was actually gonna say it doesn't sound like Steve Stephen Bloom when he's casting. It sounds like somebody else. Stephen Bloom could not be bothered with the menial script of the game, the actual gameplay. He couldn't be mar uh, bothered to do grunts. I'm sure it's him. Oh yeah, it just doesn't sound like him, like his usual voice. You know, the one that they keep on contracting him to do. I swear, he's like the Humphrey Bogart of anime. And he's like, well, this time I want to be something else. No, no. See, Steve, what you don't get is we hired you to be Stephen Bloom. So we're going to we're gonna ask that you be Stephen Bloom. But I don't know. I, I was thinking about being like a pirate this time. No, no. We paid you to be Stephen Bloom. Because he's, it's literally, that's, at least before his early work where he was trying to find himself, now it's like he has to do that voice every time he plays a character. Oh, at least it's one this time. Because, like, I've, I've heard his early stuff where he was, like, an Armitage and he was playing a drunk guy. It's not the same thing, but then, but before then, he had not found his inner Stephen Bloom, apparently. I don't know why this late in the game they still give me Mage of Souls. Because they have to fill the chest with something. Oh, there's the treasure. Dante's Blades. Yellow, Yellow candy! We don't want that. Let's see. Nah, it's treasure. I'll take it. I'll just get rid of what about uh, Dante's Blades? I got the Dante's Blades. Okay. They're the combat crosses. <laughs> no, we don't want that. We don't want that. Oh, hello. I didn't know I had company. Mimi Roo! Greetings. I'm Mimi Roo. Something wrong? Oh. <laughs> it's like it's Black Rose, but she's mm. not being a jerk. I've never seen a character in that color before. Red's pretty rare. 
And you're pretty powerful. Um, uh... <laughs> oh, I'm just meeting up with my friend here. Huh? <laughs> what? You call me all the way out here and now you want to change the location? Sorry, I just got an email saying the location's changed. That's how it is. Hey, wait a sec. Use this if you'd like. Maybe a sword. I don't know how to get rid of the yellow candy. Well, see you around. Yeah. Okay, please tell me Black Rose is here because it looked like it was her in the <sighs> background. Yeah, Black Rose is here. She's like, you're cheating on me with another heavy blade. You're still fat. <laughs> well, you've probably watched uh, Donna Gift, haven't you? No, you haven't watched Gift. Never mind. No. I was. You've probably watched Unison if you watched all of Sign, and I gave you all the DVDs. Unison is another series. Or... Un it's a bonus episode. I don't think so. Okay. I'll just. I don't. I don't remember bonus episodes, but. I'll just wait till after because it's essentially a post ep post series episode anyway. All right, so I'm assuming Mimi Rue's sword is going to be like a huge upgrade for Black Rose. It might be. I don't know because it would have been if I went earlier. Oh, okay. Twenty seven. Calamity. Nah, frankly, she's got a better weapon now. I love it. There is such a different personality with Black Rose and Mimi Rue. They're like with Black Rose, she's very down straight to business kind of thing, and then Mimi Rue is very perky. It makes me laugh inside. Just don't let Mimi Rue know you sold her sword. And I love the fact that during that whole conversation, Kite was just kind of dumbfounded. Yeah. Uh, uh, uh. Wise man looked at him and went, I think you need some help with the ladies. <laughs> okay, now we can go to the mirrored city. All right. Now we can finish the city. Now, now we have... Uh, bonus content and all that. Now Thank that Rika, now that Rika's all grown up and working at Bandai, <laughs> can she still digivolve? Does Re does Renamon help her with her animations? I maybe protected. You can. That combat animation does not seem real, Rika. Here, watch me. <laughs> but it, yep, that's very big lids in this too. And we use the one U core that we got from Maeus. Complete. Thank God I don't have to go virus core farming. Yes, if if you had to, we we did this thing. Hideo Kojima powers activate. It all comes back to Hideo Kojima with you, doesn't it? Same thing with you and Hideki on him. I gotta have something to keep up. Considering we just had our encounter with Mimiru, who's voiced by the original Rei Ayanami. Yes, which is such a difference. Ooh. Ooh, this is pretty cool. Oh, wait, 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 exactly. wait. Yes, you notice. Every oh, no. Are we going to meet the dad? The what? Or the creator? No. Where he's all bound up by wires or whatever? No, we're not here to meet Harold. Yes, wise man. It is always good to have a solid plan. So I dare say this is actually cooler than the other bonus dungeon. Yeah, than the little airship. Yes, wise man, it is good to have a solid plan. Shut up. But you'll notice this is essentially a big upside-down castle. Oh, yeah. It's pretty cool, too. And I love the music to this place. In fact, I will criticize Sign because I really do think that, that more time should have been spent there. You know, like, we should have gotten some really good concept designs from it. We had plenty there. Obviously, no, we only got, like, two episodes there. Oh. That would have been, like, a really cool, like, four or five episode arc. Or even if you had to go back. 
Actually, no. They did have to go back, and then nothing was there. And we're back in temples. Yay! Oh, Spike Pit! Holy crap! King Worm! Uh, wow, for a second there, that looked like a giant raccoon to me. I'm not sure why. I wanted to channel out to Aldo Gomez, who does geek news, reviews, and opinions with us, and go, Raccoons! Raccoons. <laughs> Which is really sad, because he's he's taken like a three-week absence because of work, so we missed him horribly in the last episode. It's a shame, though, we're not actually having it this week, because there's so much interesting news to talk about in the world of geek news. Which would be... Well, for one, Awada Satoru Awada's been reassigned re, uh, reinstated as president of Nintendo. Yes, I saw that. Um, the, the reason that we're not is because, unfortunately, it's... It's, it's the holidays. Yeah, it's the holidays. Yeah. I'm going to get Pete, or I don't want to be the mean guy and make the night the holiday. They can get their sleep so they don't get their sleep on the floor. Because <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Everybody stays up until like midnight or one cleaning up fireworks. So... But that's what we're doing. But yeah, I saw the Satori Wada was reinstated. Um, I'm a little bit more interested in his health, but I haven't been able to see too many check-ins with that. Well, good. I guess it's con good considering though <laughs> Nintendo's not been doing extremely well this year. They haven't, but I think they... But I would actually dare make the argument that None of the console makers have been doing well this year. That's true. I mean, because everybody's kind of been hurting this year. I, I would actually dare say Nintendo's doing better because at least they've had their console out for two years and it's been selling. Not as much though as they'd like. No. Unfortunately, but I, I actually think after the E3 announcements, it's going to be selling a lot better. Yeah, Mario. Now that Mario with Mario Kart 8 Smash Bros. Let, let me clarify that it will be selling a lot better in 2015. Uh, well, no, that's not the case. Because if they hold true to their Smash Brothers announcement, then it'll do well. Oh, it's the monkey! That's, uh, Speaking of Aldo, I mean, he went out and did the, the Smash Brothers tournament, and he enjoyed it, and so that may be one of those things where we're, we're going to have him check in and tell us what he thinks of uh, Smash Brothers. I just realized the monkey has a cannon. I don't know if we should give such heavy machinery to a monkey. Black Rose, stop physically attacking it. Just use your magic, please. Elemental Hunt! <laughs> Alright. And then what was the other news that you wanted to cover? Uh, well, Hayao Miyazaki and Toshio Suzuki have been invited to join the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences. Oh yeah, I heard about it. Um, I, I kind of wonder why they were doing that now. Maybe because of Miyazaki's retirement. Uh, he's... Well, Miyazaki's been invited, like, three times previous. I think he's just told them no. Yeah, because, and the reason is because Miyazaki felt that'd be kind of a, a too, sort of a point in his career where it would feel too much like it was the end if he joined. And now he's willing to join. I, well, it, they haven't confirmed if they're joining yet. They've just been invited. So, whether they'll actually join is, we have to see. I wonder if he doesn't, is, is that going to start up the rumor mill going of uh, he's not retired? He's working on something else? Probably. I don't know. I could see Suzuki might, because Suzuki kind of semi-retired now. Miyazaki, I I'm thoroughly convinced he's never going to be retired. He's going to be hes going to be like Shigeru, Lord Shigeru is, where you're going to have to take security and haul him out of the building. Because that's the only way Shigeru Miyamoto is retiring. Mm -hmm. Is forced retirement, you know. Even though, like, I've seen stories saying, no, he's he's getting ready to take more of a of an executive role, and he's stepping back. I'm like, Lord Shigeru never steps back. He always steps right back in. Especially since he actually still has a an IP he has to announce. Yeah. So, I don't see him being done just yet. Yeah, a number of people have been invited to join this year to the Academy, including, uh, I can never say her name, it's that really complicated name, the one who's in the new Star Wars movie, the woman. 
or just... Yeah, I don't, I don't think I can say anything. Yeah, she's no. been invited. Uh, the Somali-born actor who played in Captain Phillips has been invited to join. Yeah. Steve jablonski has been invited to join. He'll probably take it. I would think so. He would probably take it. Yeah, the one thing in the Transformers movies I can say I like regardless is because I like Steve Jablonski's scores. Um, I still listen to them. No, did you see the, the news that came out? I think it was yesterday that supposedly Carrie Fisher's daughter is going to be in episode 7. Sounds like a bit of a rumor, but okay. I hope it's a rumor, because that, that would kind of bug me a little bit. That's that's like where one of the things that bugs me about Jaden Smith so much is that he's old. Like the last couple times he's always working with his dad in some way. So his dad's either producer or he's the co-actor. And that's one of those things where I've, I've said, even on Geek News, uh, I would appreciate Jaden more if he stepped out of his daddy's shadow. Yeah. Stop paralyzing her. But from what Romney tells us, it sounds to me like that's more Will Smith's problem, not Jaden Smith's problem. Mm -hmm. Will Smith refuses to realize he is not relevant anymore. I know that's hard to say, got Will Smith fans, but he's really not relevant anymore. He's had his moment in the sun. I'm sorry. Wow, that was a really long four now that I think about it. We had lots of battles. Hisayashi, Miyazaki's go-to composer, was actually invited last year, now that I think about it. Did he accept? I don't know, actually. I just know, again, all I know is people were invited, whether they Pe People are gonna take away from this, oh, no. what, does Adam not fo- or what, is, does Drac does not follow the Academy? No, I don't. I, I've kind of like lost a lot of respect for the Academy. Over the many years, like, a lot of the movies that I find are just the best thing to come out of the summer don't get any nominations. Because they're unworthy. I'm sorry, they're not unworthy. They earn more money than the other movies you want to nominate. Yeah, but would you really say Transformers <laughs> is Oscar worthy other than its visual effects? I'll, I enjoyed the Transformers. No, I'm not saying Transformers. The I first one would have been worthy of it. I, I enjoy the movies for what they are, but as serious contenders for a Yeah, but there, a there has to be at least like there has to be at least some level of recognition because they do earn the money for the industry, okay? I get that people wanted to do 13 Years as a Slave and all that, but I want to see at least some kind of recognition that these movies earn a lot of the money that you invest into these indie projects kind of thing, these out-of-the-box projects. And to shun them the way that the Academy does a lot of the time, uh, I just think is kind of a slap in the face. I, I will forgive them at least, you know, like where I thought Lord of the Rings was a really innovative film, they made up for that when Return of the King came out and Lord of the Rings walked away with everything. Because then at that point, it was kind of like, those were kind of awards for the whole trilogy, not for just the one. But for example, like, I don't think the Avengers got that many nominations. We'll say that in the technical category. Yeah, yeah, in the geek category. And all the, the visual effects and the makeup and all that. And that's the part that irritates me a little bit is, you know, where a lot of people like to herald actors for these minor projects, and they may be deserving of them, but so are some of the other actors in these big movies, too. You know, Chris Hemsworth does a really great job as Thor. Um, I will dare say Christian Bale does a really great job as Batman. And I think you need some level of recognition for that. I don't know. I don't think... There's really more to an Oscar for Bale. Okay, I'm, then what about, what about Heath I'm, Ledger for the Joker? 
He won an Oscar for that. Did he? I thought it was like an honorary thing. He won competitively. Oh, okay. Yes, it was posthumous, but he still won it competitively. Oh, is that, why, is that why Jack was pissed off that year? He wasn't pissed off. I, I heard like after that Oscar year, Jack Nicholson was pissed off. He, Nicholson stopped attending. I don't know why, but I don't think that's because it. because he's Jack Nicholson. He's got better <laughs> things to do. Yeah. Uh, yes, I'm sorry. He has to get ready for the year three thousand when he was going to be cloned into a gorilla. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm sorry, my old fanboys, but I'm more in the Michael Keaton's a bit of a better Batman than Christian Bale. Um, I can't comment on that one. I have not seen Michael Keaton. Val Kilmer, I still will say, is a pretty dang good Batman back in the day. I don't think he could do it this in this day and age. George Clooney, however, seriously, yeah. Schumacher, what the heck were you thinking? I usually am one of those people that says, you know, George Clooney can do anything. But I even I looked at that and went, I don't know if George can do Batman. Yeah. He really should not have been Batman. I, but I will hand I will hand credit over to Christian Bale, not for the Batman voice, but for the fact that he got the character. I don't think he did. He, he always, did. He no, he really didn't. He always overplayed it, I think. He, well, he always well, what what are you specifically talking? He about? always kind of overplayed the Bruce Wayne persona. Like he didn't act like a. That's what he, he's supposed to do, though. I, he didn't. Michael Keaton. See, like the difference between him and say like Michael Keaton. Michael Keaton just he Keaton makes him feel like Bruce Wayne's kind of regular. Like well, he, again, like he, I can't comment on Michael Keaton. I don't know. Him. I know, but uh, he feels like essentially he's a regular more regular kind of person. I, so I, I, I have a hard time explaining this. So basically, you like Michael Keaton because in a lot of cases, like Batman the Animated Series kind of followed the Michael Keaton model, where Bruce Wayne was just kind of a regular guy. He would do these these big bombastic things, but it was fine because it was just Bruce Wayne. He cared about people. Yeah. So that's where you like Keaton. I like Christian Bale's because in a lot of cases it follows some of the comics where he he does have to play up the playboy role because it gets people off his suspicion where, you know, the Batman comes involved and it's always involving Wayne Tech. You know, like, that's always something I love to see in comics where they always go into, well, it's always suspicious that Batman always seems to have all this Wayne Tech and all that. And, you know, Marvel has a good justification for that with Iron Man where it's just like... Well, he's Tony Stark's bodyguard, so of course they got to keep the suit up to speed. But in Batman's case, everybody goes like, well, why are you doing that? So they have to have Bruce Wayne go and spend a bunch of money right. for no reason. To get people off his back, kind of thing. So I, I appreciate that. But also, the fundamental part of Bruce Wayne, I think Christian Bale got as well. I still, I still love the discussion in Batman Begins, where him and Liam are, are you know, he's won the Trial of Shadows, and so he's told that uh, he must now go to Gotham and kill. And he says, no, I won't do that. Because Batman still won't kill. That's just the bottom line of it. That's one of those few things that him and Superman could agree on. Is that you don't kill. Yeah. I get a feeling you probably won't like the, uh, the Burton film as much. Even if I show them to you. I didn't like... Like, forever I was okay with, and I didn't really like Batman and Robin. Well, nobody likes Batman and Robin. No. Purple Mist. Boss time. Ba, ba, ba. Dun, dun, dun. And the boss is the creator from There's something the in the back. I told you it's not. I'm just saying, spoiler alert. What the... It's acting like the boss of this ghost town. It's a Digimon! How can you not say that's a Digimon? Uh, wise man. Resurrect. Thank you. Ow.
At least Weissman gets the point. He's got not he's almost got a pretty much a million HP, so. No, he's got almost ten thousand HP. Oh fine. Ten thousand a million. We can say numbers. Ten He's got like a million HP, yo. No, I know of bosses that have a million HP, alright? People might not think I know math, but I know math. I actually really like the boss music, but these aren't like the phases where you gotta wait for a pretend break. Though you can date a dream and get items. Oh, you can? Okay. Yes. Uh, can't Is it recommended that you do that? Yeah. Uh, some though. Yeah, not this game. The next game, there's the, the bonus boss is actually really, really difficult to get to date a dream. So. So I probably won't be doing not this one, but the next one. Ow, oh, stupid thing. What? Kind is dead? Life drain, okay. Well, I mean, we're, we're still hitting this guy pretty hard. I mean, he's down to 4,000 HP. Ideally, you could probably do this with two tanks and you could stand by me the hero. But that's not my style, yo. I like to be a... I like to be the fighter. You kind of build Kite as a tank, though, so that that's that's fine. Because in a lot of cases, like Kite has kind of bordering similar health to Black Rose. Oh, Even when he brought in Marlo, like uh, Kite had similar, or actually no, he had more HP than Marlo, so that's fine. Yeah, I don't think there's going to be a need to data drain this guy. He's going down pretty easy. Aha. Uh -huh. But you're going to do it anyway. Of course. Like I said, you get items from him. Viral infection has spread. Crimson, Crimson Raid. And now he's a skull. He's a skull. A death head. Don't mock the skull, mortal, for I, is Murray! Is you destroyed the city? We have the lucky shoes. So the Crimson Raid, would that be an upgrade to Kite's weapons? I we'll see. I don't know actually. <laughs> We're back in Dunloriag. That still was a cool, pretty cool looking boss, so I'm not gonna criticize this game for that. Yeah, rare weapon for a trim tr trim twin blade. It actually has life drain. Ooh. But I think I like my death but effect better, so. No, he's not going to use the Crimson Raid. Let's see, what else do I got? I got the Lucky Shoes. For a way faster. Ah, this gives me Rick Sam and Rick Game. And it has the added effect of no damage. That doesn't happen as often as you'd like it to, but I'm going to equip it anyway. On to Kite? Of course, onto me. What do you think I'm gonna waste? Oh, I thought I, I thought it was. Uh, it looked like it was for a wave master or something. You could give it to a wave master if you really wanted. Wait. Uh, but uh, screw elk. Actually, I can't give it to a wave master. It can't um, be equipped. Of black. course not. I could give it to Black Rose if I wanted to, but I want it for myself. And I see what you're doing there. Now it boosts my attack, defense, gives me all these. And now you're actually wearing shoes, uh, shoes as opposed to socks. Yes, as opposed to the ninja socks. Well, I'm all right. And so that is all the bonus content for Dot Hack Mutation. So in the meantime, like we said in the end episode, we're going to be going to Fantasy Star Three next. I'm going to be taking the helm again, and uh, we're going to be getting through what is one of my favorite of the Fantasy Star uh, series. So that'll be a fun time. But in the meantime, we are Dragon Shadow, and this has been a Let's Play of Dot Hack Mutation for the PlayStation 2. See you guys later, if we're not disbanded by then.